Some time had passed since Alexis's funeral. Ezra Volkov alerting his twin sister, our matriarch Autumn Kialoha, that their mother's gravesite was finally complete and ready for visitation. Ezra and Edward picked a big cemetery next to the lighthouse in Brindleton Bay. It was very peaceful, overlooking the ocean, and since it was newer, Ezra and Edward were able to buy a bigger plot of land for their mother, along with some additional space, so that Autumn and Shanna could bury the remains of their son, River Kialoha, and next to his grandmother, and Autumn thought the plot, both Alexis's and River's designated areas of it, were beautiful. She definitely wasn't ready for this. She was grateful that her brothers took on all the responsibility when it came to Alexis's posthumous affairs. They were much stronger than she was. She simply wouldn't be able to handle this. She remembered Shanna and her optimism. Death is a sad, horrible thing, but on the bright side, her son and her mother can rest peacefully alongside each other forever. Perhaps Alexis will take care of him in the afterlife for her. She got back home, immediately running to the bathroom, while Clint was about to head out to Windenburg. He would be meeting someone from online, an anonymous user that emailed him regarding information about his biological parents. Clint's not an idiot. He knew that there were weirdo stalker fans online that would send him anything to get his attention. But the thing is, how on earth did this sim know that his mother's maiden name is Keta? This sim knew something, it was clear, and he was dying to know who they were. So, he agreed to meet up with them at a cafe in Windenburg. But first, he had to change into his celebrity disguise. He stood outside the coffee shop, umbrella in hand. No one in particular caught his attention, until he noticed an elderly woman intently approaching him. This can't possibly be them, could it? But to his surprise, it was. The two of them headed inside, sitting down in a quiet corner of the cafe. And that's when the mysterious Sim formally introduced herself. Her name was Elsa Pearson, and she's Clint's biological sister. Holy shit, no way, Clint has a sister from his biological parents, that's incredible. The more he looked at her, the more he saw the family resemblance, they looked insanely similar. Clint was so stoked to find out that he has a blood relative, and Elsa was glad to have finally found him. But she warned Clint, he won't be as excited as he currently is when she tells him the truth. But first, she wanted to know what his adoptive mother, Alexis Ketter, told him about his biological parents. Clint told Elsa that Alexis had found him on the side of the road when he was a baby and took him in as her own. She thought that maybe his biological parents abandoned him. Elsa shook her head in disbelief. She couldn't believe that bitch could be so cruel. Clint was confused, and he also didn't like how Elsa was talking about his mother. She just died too. Elsa knew she just died. It was how she found out about Clint and how to contact him. And it was also the best thing to happen to her because that meant that her kidnapper, the sim that traumatized her and left a stain on her entire life, was gone for good. She was glad she was dead and wasn't sorry for that. Now, Clint was really confused. Trauma kidnapper what the hell was elsa talking about and so it began the truth we should probably go back to the beginning the day my life changed forever i was just a girl back then a teenager with a few days left until aging up to an adult, peacefully sleeping in my bed in our parents' Bjorn and Clara Bjorsen's crumbling owl home. When suddenly, my slumber was interrupted. I heard a noise coming from outside. I went over to check and saw something absolutely terrifying. It was what appeared to be a wolf attempting to break into our home. The wolf wasn't expecting to see me, so they ran off in fear. And even though part of me knew I should just leave it alone, I couldn't help but feel the need to go outside and check if the creature was gone. Stupid, I know. Suddenly... 
everything went black. When I woke up, I found myself in a strange place. A damp, dark, desolate cave. And that's when I saw her. Alexis Catter. When Alexis realized I was awake, she changed into that terrifying beast form that I saw trying to break into our house. She had this piercing look of evil in her eyes that I could never forget. I'd never seen that woman before. I had no idea what she wanted or why she brought me there. Why was she doing this? And all Alexis said to me was to blame my father. I didn't know what that meant, but it didn't matter. Whatever Alexis wanted with me now was happening, and all I could do was sit and endure it. I passed out from the torture Alexis inflicted upon me, and as I regained consciousness, I overheard Alexis on the phone, with whom I presumed to be our parents, asking for a ransom of 10,000 simoleons. Our parents obliged, agreeing to meet Alexis with the cash, but it wasn't our parents that came to save me. It was almost like an unresolved mod glitch occurred or something. Weird. The Sims paid Alexis, saving my life, and I was free to go, but I wasn't going back home. I ended up in Strangerville for some time, far, far away from Windenburg, and the two Sims that saved me wanted nothing to do with me. They didn't even know why they showed up. Again, so weird. I was alone, a teenage girl, by herself. No money. Traumatized. Strangerville definitely lived up to its name. The citizens were weird and very unhelpful. Whenever I asked for directions back home, they would just give me the lead paint stare. So I found solace in the library. But before searching for my way back home, I searched my name online to see if my parents had told the media anything about my disappearance. And to my surprise, there was nothing about me online. <laughs> Literally not one thing. My parents didn't give a single fuck that I was gone. <laughs> Coming to this realization was painful for me. I knew I was probably the least favored out of my other sisters, but I didn't know our parents downright hated me. What was the point in going back to Windenburg if my own parents didn't even want me there? So it was settled. I wasn't going back to Windenburg. I was officially on my own. I fell into a deep depression after everything that happened, using medications and alcohol to cope. I couldn't hold a job. I couldn't be in a relationship. I couldn't look at my body and all the scars Alexis left on it. And I was shit at making friends. But things got a bit better when I realized I loved to craft. Woodworking, knitting, candle making. I could do it from the safety of my own home away from the chaos outside in Strangerville. And things got even better when I realized I could sell my crafts without having to leave the house. But one thing I wanted more than ever was to get away from Strangerville. So I crafted and crafted and crafted until I saved up enough money to buy myself a quaint little home in Hanford on Bagley the most peaceful place in the Sim Nation. I've lived there since, experimenting with baking and gardening, with canning and beekeeping, and I just love participating in the competitions the town holds every week. But no matter how hard I tried to forget about the past, 
I simply couldn't. I had to know why our parents never searched for me. I went back to my childhood home in Windenburg to see if anyone was there. It looked exactly the same. Same furniture, same interior design. But it was dead silent. So I broke inside. And once I was inside, I realized that all wasn't the same. Something had happened here. Something bad. I carefully investigated my home. One thing I was sure of was that no one had lived there in a long time. And then, on top of the kitchen counter, I noticed a rotten pie. And on the ground, I noticed dried vomit. And the most terrifying thing I noticed was an empty bassinet alongside my old bed. I came to a conclusion. Something was in that rotten pie that took out our entire family. That's why there wasn't any blood. As for the bassinet, I never had a child, meaning someone in our family did. And that meant one of two things. One, whoever murdered our family also murdered the baby. Or two, whoever murdered our family kidnapped the baby. And who did I know that wouldn't hesitate to kidnap a child? Alexis Catter. Alexis hid you well. No matter how hard I searched, which I did for the past two Sims decades, I could not find a trace of any Bjorsen family member existing. I never knew the little forest town of Moonwood Mill existed. A perfect sanctuary for werewolves and other occults. But my heart sank when I saw a pop-up about an up-and-coming artist by the name of Clint Volkov. The resemblance was uncanny. That's you. I knew it. You're who I've been searching for this whole time. And though I was absolutely sure you were my brother, I waited patiently to see if the media would reveal anything else about you, like your adoption, or your family trip to Granite Falls, and who you had attended that trip with. And there she was, Alexis Catter, elderly, decrepit, on the brink of death. So I waited until the media announced the death of your adopted mother, Alexis Ketter Volkov, before striking, finally feeling safe enough to make contact with the one blood family member I have left in this world, my little brother, Clint Pearson. It seemed like Alexis made a mistake. She had completely forgotten about Elsa's existence, letting her slip through the cracks. Elsa wanted Clint to understand that he was not found on the side of the road. Alexis murdered their entire family, and the only reason she could think of for her not harming Clint was out of pity. She has no idea why Alexis targeted their dad and what he could have possibly done. But that's the truth. Clint was prepared to call Elsa, this random woman, countless names and insults. His adopted mother may have had issues, but she was a good woman. She loved him and took care of him. Elsa understood why Clint would be defensive about Alexis, but she needed him to understand that it was in fact the truth. She will take a DNA or lie detector test. She went to go get coffee. Clint sitting alone in silence for a minute. It can't be true, right? He broke down on Elsie's shoulder. He believed her. He really did. He didn't need a DNA or lie detector test. He could tell Elsa was his own flesh and blood just by looking at her. 
What the hell did Bjorn do to deserve that fate? What did his mother and sisters do? Elsa understood how all of this was hard to come to terms with. There is nothing more that she wants than to know her brother. So, she made him an offer. There will always be a bed available for him in her home. She gave him her address and told him that he is welcome at any time. She will be there waiting, but she hopes he won't wait too long. She's not as young as she used to be, and she'd love if they could make up for lost time. He couldn't walk back into his childhood home sober after everything he'd just heard. He has an elderly sister. His adopted mother kidnapped him and murdered his entire family. Everything he ever thought about Alexis was a lie. His whole life was a lie. What the hell is he supposed to do now? He can't go back to his house and pretend that everything is normal. He could only scream for answers at Alexis's headstone, only to be left with nothing. But he could yell at Chris or Autumn. There's no way in hell the both of them don't know. Ezra and Autumn were teenagers when he was kidnapped. Were they dumb enough to buy Alexis's side of the road spiel? And how about Chris? Surely Clint becoming a part of the family randomly one night wasn't without a conversation. He knew. He had to. Chris is an accomplice to the death of his parents. His real parents, drunk and enraged, he marched back home. The rest of the family was completely oblivious to the eventful day Clint was having. Shanna and Chris were tending to twins Aurora and Oasis, while Sage continued his Montessori school prep from yesterday. Autumn, with her level 10 cooking skills, was busy in the kitchen, as today was Harvest Fest, and since this would be the first Harvest Fest without Alexis, she wanted to make it special, and Oasis reached the left head milestone. It's so fun torturing these little pet sperms, my goodness. Clint is very drunk, and very pissed. He couldn't help himself as he stumbled inside the house and found his way to Chris. What the fuck did Alexis do to his biological family? How could he possibly love a murderer? Why would he stand idly by and not go to the police? Chris was not expecting this. At first, he didn't know what his drunken son was referring to, but then it hit him. Clint had somehow found out about what Alexis did to the Beersons. Chris had assumed that Alexis's secrets died with her. How the hell did this come out? But Clint barely let him speak. He wanted to hear him confess it. Alexis murdered his family in cold blood, right? And he knew this entire time, right? Chris was backed into a corner, but even in death, he had to protect Alexis. He didn't admit to anything. And once Clint figured out that Chris wasn't going to talk, he stormed over to Autumn, obliviously cleaning around the house in preparation for dinner. She knew, didn't she, this entire time. A random white toddler shows up in her house, and she didn't think to alert the authorities. Autumn didn't know what the hell Clint was yapping about, so he made it clear her mother, Alexis, was a sociopathic murderer. She murdered his entire biological family and then kidnapped him, and she knew. How dare she act like she didn't? Autumn could tell Clint was drunk, telling him to go sleep it off before dinner later. And that's when Clint started to get violent. He started insulting her, calling her all sorts of mean names. Autumn got a bit scared. She'd never seen this side of Clint before. And that's when Chris rushed to his daughter's defense. Chris told Clint to leave her alone, that she had nothing to do with it. That she was under the impression this entire time that Clint was found on the side of the road. Everything he said is true, everything. But if he wants to be mad at someone, he didn't want him taking it out on Autumn. She's been through enough. Take it out on him. Wait, what did Chris mean by everything was true? But Autumn didn't have the time to ask, because Clint took what Chris said literally. That was for his mother, and his father, and his for dead siblings, and his traumatized elderly sister that he lost decades of time with. And for himself. He's always felt out of place, and now, he knows why. His whole life is a lie he hated him. He hated Alexis, and this was the last time he would ever be seeing him. Clint marched upstairs to his bedroom to begin packing his things. He was done with this place, done with the Volkovs. He would miss his siblings, and Shanna, and his nephew Sage, and nieces Aurora and Oasis, but he couldn't be here anymore. He felt sick. He felt angry. He felt lied to. 
So, with his life packed up, he stormed out of the Volkov house, the house he'd known since childhood, the lie he'd believed since boyhood, and left. He was going to hen for Don Bagley to make up for lost time with his real family, Elsa Bjorsen, until her very last breath.